Marjala Bon Femme, les fruits de mer. What? Fruits of the sea. Whatever's that? Oh, scallops to you. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Bridges. Pheasant, partridge. Oh, now, roast quail sounds nice. I wonder if his lordship would fancy a little game tonight. I know him, he would. Honest, Mrs. Bridges has made suggestions to me I wouldn't even take from my own father. There was never no funny business when Sir Richard Bellamy was alive. Oh, we've seen some comings and goings, to be sure. First Lady Marjorie goes down with the Titanic, and then Sir Richard goes down with anthrax. <laughs> Anthrax was an infectious disease of sheep. Sir Richard was no snob. Poor man hardly told when young Mr Lawrence got the chop. Yes, and us not knowing nothing about it till we read the new cast list in the TV time. <laughs> Bringing in special guests indeed. Well, national theatre or not, we're as good as they are, my girl. Thank God Miss Elizabeth was spared. Well, only just. They say she's hanging on by a thread. Mind you, she's got one of the best men in Arley Street fighting to save her. Her doctor? Her agent. <laughs> he says unless she recovers the power of speech by next week, he's taking it up with equity. Oh, I wish things didn't have to change. This house is so full of memories. Remember the night that I came to you and told you that the old Queen had gone? Yes, and I told you not to speak so disrespectful of Mr Abbs. <laughs> yeah. Not permanent, any roads. You mark my words, Rose. Life downstairs don't change. Changes will have to be made. <laughs> the kitchen staff are quite unsuitable. But, Aunt, surely we should spare Mrs Bridges. She's a treasure. If she's a treasure, then I suggest you bury her in the garden. <laughs> she's innocent and blind to all decency. Yesterday I reprimanded her, told her she had the face of a water buffalo, and she dared to answer me back. Well, I'm not at all surprised. Then you obviously haven't read the script. It says that she is speechless with rage. Instead, she ranted on for three pages. <laughs> the servants must remember their places. They are supporting players. <laughs> have you considered who will replace Mrs. Bridges? Well, I shall have a word with Sir Geoffrey when it comes to tea. Uh, you rang, my lady. At last, Hudson. <laughs> Hudson, I specifically asked Mrs. Bridges for fairy cakes, and what have you brought? This is Rock Hudson. I remove the offending object for a gift, my lady. Oh, by the way, Sir Geoffrey Fowles is waiting downstairs. Well, damn it, man, why didn't you send him up? Well, he's a politician, sir, and in my experience, politicians don't like being sent up. I'm late. I was delayed at the House of Lords. I've just introduced my bill. Was it well received? Oh, they liked my bill so much. Next week I'm singing Old Man River. <laughs> I'll fetch the fairy cakes, my lady. <laughs> Sir Geoffrey, I'm seeking a new cook. Could I interest that young woman who was in your employ, Miss Jackson? Was she an adventurous cook? Ah, yes, indeed. One afternoon, she came into the dining room with the most delicious pear covered in batter. She'd been leaning too far over the mixing bowl. Not even a scullery made in the house now. Work, work, work. I might as well wave goodbye to my evening off. Oh, stop complaining, my girl, and be thankful for your lot. That horrible politician bloke staying for dinner, pompous old windbag, strutting up and down like a turkey cock. Mind your tongue, Rose. <laughs> Sir Geoffrey is very popular with the voters. He has an enormous majority. I reckon that's what makes him walk so funny. <laughs> well, he's ruined my evening, and that's for sure. Alfred was taking me up west to the Gaiety Theatre. 
Oh, some musical entertainment, I shouldn't wonder. Yes, and it's got that new girl in it that they're all raving about, Cicely, what's her name? Courtney. Oh, they say she's lovely. Oh, she's all right in a way, I suppose, but she'll never last. <laughs> now, Rose, stop daydreaming and look busy when Mr. Rutson comes in. Fetch up the water for a ladyship's bath, then do the grapes. Mr. Rutson, we didn't expect you for ages. Why are you back so early? It's not for you to question your betters, Rose. Oh, blimey, Mr. Rutson, not you and all. I'm fed up to me back teeth with me betters, what with all the theatrical gentry upstairs. Why do you reckon they had to bring in special guest stars? I would remind you, Rose, that there is a natural social order in human affairs that we question at our peril. The upstairs have always been high on hats and low on fees. <laughs> While in return for our more menial tasks, we are assured money, ratings and top billing. <laughs> this temporary influx of theatrical knights and dames to the upper regions must pass. I promise you that the downstairs will not be upstaged. Very nicely put, Mr. Rapps. <laughs> but what about our present predicament? Oh, be of good cheer. The mistress and master are leaving us. Leaving us, Mr. Rutson? Yes, I've seen next week's script. They're going on a luxury cruise. <laughs> well, I never. After Lady Marjorie met her watery end, you wouldn't think they'd dare. Wouldn't think the scriptwriters would dare, neither. <laughs> Mind you, they'll only be gone a short while. I think not, Rose. They're sailing on the Lusitania. Oh, Rose! Oh, it's the best quiet ever of them! I have an announcement to make. Mrs. Bridgers, you will take a week's notice. Today's tea cakes were the last straw. Begging your pardon, me, lady, but they was based on a recipe they use every Christmas at Balmoral. Which probably explains why their majesties always go to sun. <laughs> it ain't fair. You can't replace our Mrs. Bridges. I already have. I'd like you all to meet Miss Jackson. Glenda Jackson. Well, there goes our television award for 1974. My days here are finished. I, I might as well pocket my pride, my professionalism, my integrity as a character actress, and see if they'll take me. Oh, my God. The Victorian home for faded theatricals? Yes. Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs>